Today we're going to look at the GATE program, an acronym which stands for Gifted and Talented Education. In Canada, we called it TRAIL. And I'm sure in the EU and the UK, you have your own programs. Now, the official story is that this was used to select gifted students from the public school system and then grant them extra opportunities within the curriculum to harness their talents and their gifts. Now, as we start to look further into this, clearly not the real case within this little program. In reality, this was used to find and seek out people with psychic abilities in the general population and break down those people into two categories. Category A being those who can be molded and used for a universalist agenda. These people in particular would have traits high in extroversion, high in agreeableness, charismatic people, and what they will do is, it's multifaceted, they'll, they'll take them, they'll turn them, and their own literature says they'll turn them into global citizens and use them for the universalist agenda. Now, category B, which I'm sure a lot of you do fall into category one, and a lot of you will also fall into category two. Now, category two or category B, are those who are not agreeable, are not particularly extroverted. And so what they did was they wanted to suppress these people as much as possible. And these individuals, though gifted, found themselves in dire predicaments within their public school career. They were often assigned TAs, handlers, or they were put into the special needs programs with people with cognitive disabilities, even though they were actually highly intelligent. This was all done to demoralize and to suppress the category B, whereas the category A was elevated and taught that they are superior as long as they fall in line with the global citizen universalist agenda. I am sure that many of you listening to this right now have experience with these programs because if you're into this sphere, you are likely either a psychic or a mutant. And what I mean by that is not that you can read people's minds and that you're this freak. Basically, it means that you have extrasensory perception. You figure things out very easily. You perceive things others cannot very easily. You read people extremely well, and you're very creative. The whole word psychic has been off to create a Pavlonian response in you and conjuring up images of strange old women reading tarot cards. But that's not really what it is. Now, some people get activated by certain images when it comes to suppressed memories about this program. This, for instance, is a suppressed memory People were instructed to put these on and they would hear various tones and run various tests with this. I, this image for me is very triggering. I remember this a hundred percent. I remember the tones. I remember the, the instructions. And another image would be this image here. Okay. Pick one of the four symbols now. Yeah, so choose one of the symbols. Comment below which symbol 
You pick one, two, three, or four. That's all you need to really write. And it'll be interesting to see if there's a pattern in the audience. I, for one, think that there will be a pattern. Okay. Right off the hop, we see that the C star model of giftedness is a pentagram. Okay. The pentagram going all the way back to Solomon magic. And we see different dimensions of ability. It's interesting to note that the dimensions of ability that they subscribe to giftedness is a lot more dynamic than IQ. Okay, they're not really concerned about IQ in this. It's more about combining ideas and creativity and intuition, which is very, you would think it would be more about IQ in these types of circumstances. And of course, it does play a factor. Okay, people who score very high in IQ tests, they're not just consciously solving all these super autistic puzzles. They intuitively know the answer. They're not running through it step by step. They know these things. That's how they can tell super geniuses, okay? So we have general ability, special aptitude, right? Breaking down into two factors, dynamic and static. non intellective requisites, environmental supports, and chance. Very strange that chance is a factor here. Okay, the harnessing of the psychics in the population has gone all the way back to the Third Reich. The Soviets were obsessed with it. The Glowies and the Occident are also obsessed with it. This is a massive talent pool that they need to harness. So they need to figure out who these people are and act accordingly. The C star model of giftedness, five factors facilitate talent, general ability, special ability, aptitude in specific area, non-intellectual traits, right? Dedication, strong self-concept, willingness to sacrifice. Okay, that's a key one. That is a key dynamic if you are going to be used for a universalist, universalist agenda. Environmental supports, chance, important students must have a combination of all five factors for talent to develop, for them to develop your talent. Okay. He stressed that each area was equally valuable. Each arm has a static, current, and dynamic, learning, changing. This model takes potential into account. All right, so I'm sure a lot of you can resonate. Gifted characteristics. Strong self-concept. How have you did how a student views themselves and their abilities. Positive characteristic creates an I can attitude, which empowers students to make choices, try new things, and strive for success. To build a strong self concept, teachers must use developmentally appropriate activities that promote success. Frequent positive reinforcement and a loving, caring attitude. Okay, well, I did not ever receive this from a teacher in my entire life. You know why? Because I fall into category B. That's right. I was put in special needs. I was told I cannot read. I was told I cannot write. I was told I cannot not do arithmetic. Okay, me, the guy who reads the most obscure literature in the world author of multiple books. I am illiterate, according to these people and what they told me growing up. And 
just to understand what that does to a child's self-esteem when you are somebody who is, I don't know, grade four reading Lord of the Rings and people are telling you you can't read and you're in a room of people who have severe disabilities, you feel like you are one of them and therefore you act accordingly. You don't understand what's going on. There's a disconnect. There's cognitive dissonance. And that's what they need to create for the Category Bs. Now, the Category As, I know them. I grew up with them. Constant positive reinforcement, even if they do not complete their assignments, do not be attentive in class, are disruptive, okay? Why do you think some students, there can be disruptive students and there can be other disruptive students. One type of student will get away with it. The other will be lambasted. It all comes down to what category they're in. The teachers aren't consciously doing this. They've been subconsciously programmed to treat the two differently through their own conditioning. Number two of the gifted characteristics. Internal and external motivation to achieve. Three things influence motivation, choice, effort, and persistence. In order to be motivated, teachers should use students' interests and natural curiosity in their classroom. Students need to be active learners and have high expectations for themselves to be intrinsically motivated. Yeah, of course. This is obvious, but instead of, for many of us, we were not given motivating subjects to study, we were given the opposite. Or if there was a chance that the motivating subject was coming up, maybe in a later time period and, and schedule, you were conveniently taken out of that slot and put to your little special needs <laughs> time, right? Number three, is persistent and task committed in an area of interest. Content needs to be personalized for students according to their readiness level, interest, and preferred method of learning. Tasks need to be connected to students' interests and need to have relevance. Okay, pretty much the same point over again. This is a very important one. This is for the psychics and the mutants. By psychic, I mean you are probably part of a bloodline. I'm just going to leave it at that. It's, there are multipolar bloodlines. It's not just be, means you're part of an Illuminati bloodline or whatever. It's different bloodlines. And by mutant, I mean you have whatever genetic or spiritual mutation is needed to become psychic. You're the black sheep of your family. You don't fit in. You feel like you're an alien amongst them. Now, the alien people are going to tell you that you're an alien. I'm just going to tell you that you're probably psychic. Okay. And you're a mutant. All right, visualizes images and translates into other forms, music, notation, numbers. I was extremely involved in music as a teenager, as a, an adolescent. And of course, the music teachers turned me away at every chance they could get. And one of them was actually a free carpenter. Who would have thought? Lectures may be difficult for these students. They are typically good with puzzles, mazes, reading maps, finding their way in unfamiliar territory, and creating visual images of locations and objects. Remote viewing. Remote viewing. 
Using hands-on manipulatives and computer programs may help students to learn best, okay? They can take things apart and put them back together in working order. Usually, organization is a problem for these types of students, right? Anyone can relate to that? So homework may often... It's, it's the gift. They don't care if the gifted kids do their homework. Homework is for normie kids. If you're a gifted kid, you're never getting in trouble if you're category A for not doing your homework. They have trouble with schedules and routines. These students excel with complex problems, but may struggle with basic tasks in the classroom because they don't, they're above it. They are cognitively, intuitively, they don't really need to worry. They don't sweat the small stuff. They don't need to. They may often come to surprising conclusions and keep you guessing as to what they will say next. They come up with elaborate stories and explanations. Divergent thinker. Being a divergent thinker requires student to produce many ideas or ideas that are different from the norm. They have a preference for unusual and original responses. Okay. Class clown, anyone? Anyone here, class clown? That's you. Right? That's it to a T. They do not think of the most common response first. Student may have trouble conforming. Uh-oh. And that's where the category A needs to be reined in. And that's what the whole process is. We'll get to that. They think they are just like every other student at first, but discover this is not true when they reach school age. Other students may be frustrated by this type of student because they think he or she should just be like everyone else. Okay, the black sheep, the outcast, those who don't fit in, right? As a result of this, students may have emotional issues related to being different. Very creative and novel thinkers may have trouble with common sense. Cannot accept authority just because it exists. They have to test their boundaries. Learn best by immersing themselves in their passion and working only on that passion until it is done. Ordinary tasks seem like a waste of time. Their thoughts and feelings are interconnected. May have trouble organizing themselves and starting large assignments. Step-by-step -step learning is a problem for these students because they see things as a whole, not in parts. Right? Sound familiar to anyone? And this is just the beginning. We're going to get to the good stuff here. The interesting. Okay. We're going to get into entities. Okay. Let's just jump ahead a little bit just to get you maybe a bit more interested. Does anybody here have a commonality with any of these traits? Interest in X phenomena, X phenomena being the occult, aliens, Bigfoot, the spiritual, the extraordinary, the unexplainable, right? Well, if you're here, you do, okay? Having an early 20s drug period, period. Yep, okay, that's me for sure. Forehead scars. I don't, ha I don't have a forehead scar. I have a cheek scar. Early speech therapy, check. Firstborn son, yes. Migraines, check. Israeli art student girlfriend. Okay, well, that's not me. Not that I know of, anyway. Me magic, of course. Premonitions, prophetic dreams, yeah. And, okay, well. The problem with being us is that it's hard to interact with like thousands of people because you ever get this? You see somebody, you meet some, you just know who they are. You know if they're going to F with you or not F with you. You know they're going to be a buddy or you know they're not going to be a buddy. You, there's no 
period of learning about somebody, of getting to know somebody, you just know them off the hop. There's no building rapport. You just write them on or you write them off immediately. And you're typically always right about it. Okay. That's my experience anyway. And I don't claim to be some super psychic, super genius or anything. I'm a, I don't see myself like that at all. But um, there's definitely people out there listening who are way more advanced than I am. Okay, this is 4chan, so blue eyes. Nope, not me. Oxidable bun. Yes. Okay. Birth complications. I should be dead right now, okay? I have my cord wrapped around my neck. I am the 1% who survives. So, I don't know if anybody else had that, but that was me. Near-death experience. I almost got hit by a bus when I was eight. I literally reached out and put my hand on the bus. And luckily, at that moment, it stopped. As it was turning the corner to run me over. Lack of memory of gate. Okay. I completely forgot this until I saw this image here. And then it all came rushing back. Good old gate. Or trail, or whatever you want to call it. Windows were covered. Apparently, a lot of people have this memory of brown uh, paper towel over the windows. I don't remember this. Tendency of being followed. Okay, this is one thing that I, I, I don't get, but a lot of people do get. I don't feel followed ever. I don't have that sensation. I don't really think I'm that important enough to be followed, but I know lots of people have that feeling. I think what follows me is they're not physical, and I'll just keep it at that. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's go back up to where we were. Gifted characteristics continued. Six. Prefers complexity and open-endedness. May struggle with basic skills, but thrive when given a complex problem situation. Teachers should give these students fewer parameters and more choices in the classroom as this lends to their desired for their desire for open endedness. So see, they get away with more than the normies. Okay, they get away with it. You don't get away with it. Okay, number seven. Contributes new concepts, methods, products, or performances. Tannenbaum labels gifted performers as gifted. Okay, Tannenbaum. Uh, wow, great. <laughs> great little sentence you wrote there. He labels gifted performers as gifted. Oh, genius. Okay. This goes along with some of the other learning needs we had touched on. Supplying students with complex and open-ended problems, giving them less parameters and more room for creativity. Eight is visionary, has a holistic view. Students see things as a whole, has trouble separating things into their parts. may struggle with step-by-step -step learning and finding a starting place when completing a large assignment because they cannot separate the parts from the whole. As a result, they are able to see the beauty of the world around them and learn to appreciate the world around them. I don't know who wrote this, but... Yeah. Students are passionate about learning. Use transformative approach to learning. Focus on knowledge as it constructed in a student context. Students are asked to reflect critically on how they came to understand information. Emphasize connections in learning as opposed to fragmentation. 
cross subject matter integrate math and science concepts for example to promote connection okay by the way I remember when they told me that I couldn't read I also became an editor by the time I was like 25 yeah anyway I jumped ship pretty quick in that scene though because I can get into the uh absolute insane story I have with that <laughs> but I'll leave it for another day if you want to hear about it Let's just say heavily infiltrated by the occult, that uh, media world. And if you don't go along with it, good luck. Uses unique solutions to problems, improvises as we discussed above. Students often do not see the common sense answers. They answer questions in different and unique ways, making you wonder. What will they say next? Students flourish with open-ended problems and few parameters because it allows them to come up with different solutions and approaches to solving the problem. Give students choice and ownership over their learning. Well, wouldn't that be great if we all got to experience that in our school? Ken is observant and pays attention to detail. Notices details others would not which helps them to problem solve. Give these students the opportunity to take on leadership roles in the classroom and in the school community. These students will do well with paying attention to the details necessary to achieve goals and perform tasks. These students do well with solving complex problems. Okay, they need to root out these divergent thinkers because they don't want, for lack of a better example, some painter walking the streets of their little cities and coming up with any extreme ideologies and starting a movement. They need to nip this in the bud as early as possible and use these types of people for their own means. If you catch my drift, right? Okay. This is where it gets kind of cringe, okay? If you can dream it, you can do it. I'll remember that this world was started with a dream and a mouse, Walt Disney and Harry Potter, okay? I don't know who shoehorned that little tibbit in there, but... Yeah, okay. But it's kind of interesting at the same time. Divergent thinker, trouble accepting authority. Yes, he learns best by immersing himself the topics such as defense against the dark arts. Wow. Anybody uh, immersed in that topic? <laughs> Feels like my whole life, okay? He has trouble studying other topics because they seem like a waste of time in order to complete his goal of defeating Voldemort. Well, okay. I don't like how they have to use Harry Potter in this instance, but like, if you feel like your destiny is to, I don't know, defeat Sauron or some big bad, you don't really care about fractions. Okay? People who go on and on about fractions, who gives a flying F about fractions? Yeah, that's, that's, that's intelligence, right? Sitting down, looking at a piece of paper for hours and figuring out fractions. Very motivated to learn and complete her goals. Persistent in areas of interest. She's naturally curious about the magical world and yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now, of course... Some of these paragraphs are the person's own take on gate. Some of it I agree with. Other aspects I don't. But yes, there seems to be two categories of gate students. Category one was the kids that after the gate program seemed to be selected. These kids have seemed to have been groomed for specific classes and all pursued advanced STEM degrees or political degrees. That's important. These kids also seem to be have been helping along to that goal. Okay, they've been helped along. 
Category 2 kids. Here's where we come in, buddies. <laughs> they found themselves in positions where their education was sabotaged from middle school on. Refuse entry into honor roll and other things that would make children that would otherwise be high achievers give up and become massive underachievers. People from the Chans are category two. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming, but I can also see that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, like I said, the people who occupy the chance are probably more talented in glow ups and the diversity higher glow ups that they have right now. So. I don't really, I haven't read this part, but let's just, you know, see what they say. The possession experience, the possession, the control of spirit possession experiences was a cultural achievement of the first magnitude. To control spirit possession experiences, people had to learn how to induce themselves to the experiences whenever they wanted to induce. Okay, this kind of ties into the whole DMT Alex Jones thing where the mass amounts of people are doing DMT and then they all see the same entities and then the entities are telling them to do very specific things. Okay. If this seems a little bit woo-woo to you, look, just look up and we'll do an episode on, on significant occultists, people who were geniuses, people who were movers and shakers, who were inundated into the occult. I'll just bring up Jack Parsons, okay? He basically revolutionized rocketry, and he was the highest level occultist that I really ever came across in my readings. He was just embedded in it at all levels, okay? All kinds of possession induction techniques are documented in the archaeological and historical records. Yes, you have... The berserkers, for example, these people would induce themselves into a bear-like state of being almost possessed by the bear spirit. You have shamans, you have psychopomps, you have psychonauts, you have everything out there. Fasting, sleep deprivation, exposure to the sun, sexual abstinence, and so on. Okay, all these people who are going on and on about you have to know fa for 358 weeks in order to achieve samsara i mean what do you think they're really getting at okay and so on more direct induction techniques include a strangulation suffocation physical mutilation such as finger amputations and so on the most favored induction techniques were the use of ethnogens or plants and medicinal herbs that could induce hallucinogenic states. These include kava, tobacco, mushrooms of all kinds, soma, nerve toxins, and so on. Dreams, too, were potential portals into the possession experience. Mm hmm. Right. Once a possession experience was induced, the greatest danger was that it could spiral out of control. Okay, I will get into some more if you want to hear about some of mine who have spiraled out of control. Yeah, that's why I don't do that anymore. It's been a very long time. In the case of berserkers, the control possession led to indiscriminate and ferocious violence. Okay. And that's where I see kind of a positive benefit to it. Of course, in the Viking Age, the Berserkers were revered as great warriors. So, the Shield Biters. In ecstatic group cults, loss of control of the possession state led to disastrous social behaviors like sexual orgies 
violent attacks on bison, and mob violence. It was therefore soon realized that control of the possession experience was top priority, else a spirit or a god would control the possessed person and use that person like cannon fodder for his own purposes. Well, we saw that in our succubus and incubus episode. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Control techniques had to manage the sense of ecstasy associated with So there you have it. I don't know how many of these types of people were shoehorned into that because that's like the high level stuff. A lot of these people would have just been suppressed and conditioned just to be low level politicians, judges, you know, shoehorned into free carpentry, you know, that whole net. Obviously, the super advanced ones would have been taken into, you know, high level glow ops. We'll see a high level glow op in this little article. Um, yeah, this is interesting, too. This is very interesting. Okay. Our mission New Hall School District students will become. Global citizens who think critically, solve problems, persevere, embrace diversity in people and viewpoints, and have a passion for learning and the arts. What arts would that be? I wonder. Okay. The arts. The arts. Not the dark arts. Okay. Our rigorous instructional program enables mastery of common core state standards, leading to college and career readiness. We support learning by fostering collaboration, providing relevance and to the real world and using technology in innovative, and it cuts off, okay, it gets all weird. Oh, and innovative ways, okay, it's half cut off. Global citizen, embrace diversity. There you go. There you go. Traits of the gifted child. Okay, the gifted child, the psychic child. The child is either a throwback or a mutant from some sort of bloodline. Okay, they have a heightened sense of self-awareness. How does that have anything to do with IQ? Okay, IQ is very sus to me anyway. There's a lot of uh, questions I have about IQ. And it was actually banned in a certain country in a certain time period. Uh, if you just want to look that up for yourself. Has a heightened self-awareness. Accompanied by feelings of being different. Okay. Indicates an ability for power of concentration capable of an intense kind of effort. Here's one they didn't uh, underline that I just saw. Exhibits keen powers of observation. Okay, you are perceiving things that other people cannot perceive. To promote sensitivity and responsibility to others. Okay. Possesses an unusual amount of information for his or her age within subject. Okay, when you're asking the, when you're telling the teacher about you know the rise and fall of the Roman Empire, that might be a sign <laughs> that you're a little bit uh, off for your uh, age bracket. As a keen sense of humor, may be gentle or hostile. Okay, that's very, very important. People who don't have senses of humor are NPCs. Okay? Because humor is really observation. And finding the 
the humor within whatever particular observation you've made. It's it's not a rational IQ thing. It's it's beyond that. It's intuitive. People are either funny or they're not. We all know that too. Okay, this is where it gets kind of creepy and we're going to do a separate video on this fella here and when I was mentioning Jack Parsons, this will be a another mover and shaker within the occult. Okay, this guy is literally a high-level intelligence asset in the United States Army. He is a lieutenant colonel of psychological operations. Okay, he is the head of, or was, uh, was the head of the Temple of Set. Whereas the temple of or the church of Satan under Anton LaVey was merely a, an overtly atheistic. The temple of Set was overtly occultic and metaphysical. They weren't saying that they were just cosplaying and they were atheists with cosplay. They were straight up, we are doing magic. Okay. Not going to read all that. Here's where we get some giga schizo take. I'm not sure if I really want to get into that. Um, you know, you get into Crowley. Again, another mover and shake in the occult. I have to do a, I'm going to do a whole series on all these people. John D. We're going to do a show on Alexander Dugan. Do <laughs> all these normie political guys think he's just some sort of political theorist? This guy is an overt occultist. He's the Rasputin of the 21st century, okay? Again, Rasputin is another person we shall look at. This is interesting, I, and I, it's, I really would like to know who wrote this because I have come to very similar conclusions through my own delving and research as this person has. And it's funny how through different means you come to the same conclusions, okay? Again, I, I, I would disagree on certain terminology he uses. But he's writing, the satanic elite use basically schizo code and patterns to absolve themselves of karmic debt. I have said this many times before. I've discovered this. The law of cult contracts. You can go look at that video. It's probably three years old now on my channel. Right. Satanists think that the intelligent and strong should dominate the dumb and the weak. Well, the thing is, we're going to get into, we have to get into the ontology of what these people believe in this certain faction, okay? Because we live in a multipolar occult world. And this is where a lot of people just lose me, is when they start going full Abrahamic and stop uh, reading between the lines. It goes much deeper than any Abrahamic uh, dichotomy. The pagan spiritual schizo Amanita Muscaria mushroom cult versus the psychopath satanic Sabetian Kabbalist adrenochrome pineal gland eaters. I I actually kind of like that dichotomy. That I can um I can see, but it's not it's not just a dichotomy. There's more there's more factions in this the two. Definitely interesting takes, though, here. Okay, and um, unfortunately, we get into the whole indigo children, star children thing, and that's how they co-opted this whole psychic movement, the, the psychics within the population. Uh, if you do manage to escape the nets, 
the Indigo Children Star Children Net will find you. And that is a complete and utter psyop designed to turn you into a entity invoking alien worshipping delusional individual, sadly. Um, once you go down this rabbit hole, it's very, very hard to get people out. Because then, once you start to think that you are an alien, forever will that concept dominate your destiny. Okay? And I am very much so convinced that this whole rabbit hole is contrived and designed to net people who escape the the above conditioning because they have contingency plans or think contingency plans or think contingency plans to make sure you don't get up to anything that they don't want yeah because once you get into this type of stuff, indigo children, you get involved into new age thinking. You get involved into love is light. You get involved in the whole David Icke thing, prison planet stuff, and of course, Gnosticism. So again, a lot of this stuff, I agree with, with this author. I don't know who it was. If anyone does, it'd be interesting to find out who. But yeah, they get into Adderall. Okay, Adderall obviously is going to calcify your pineal gland. Just like the tap water. Just like a lot of the food. Just like a lot of the stuff that they're giving us. It's going to calcify that. And you're not going to have as uh, strong intuition as you should. As you once had. Mine definitely has dulled over the years, but uh, in certain ways it's getting better again. Emery Trigger, okay. What do you guys see? What do you guys see? Let me know. I see two people in geese uh, fist bumping each other. Almost kind of like, you know, the Ginyu, not the Ginyu Force, uh, the fusion, right? When Goku and Vegeta do the fusion, I kind of see that going on here. And then on the outskirts, I see like some pretty uh, disturbing images that I'm not going to get into. Okay, there's like a skull here. Yeah, and I see like a kind of like a dog, like a demonic dog with his tongue out. Oh, maybe it's not a dog. Maybe it's a freaking... <laughs> okay, the more I look, the scarier it gets. Okay, he's got horns. There's some something going on here. I, I'm just going to... Okay, let me know. Okay, uh, I'm just going to go and tell you what I pick. I pick two. And this looks familiar too. I can't read, so I wouldn't know anything about this. I'm illiterate. I am 70 IQ drooling on the floor, muttering to myself while I smash my head on the desk repeatedly, because that was the room of people that I was surrounded with when I was in school. All right. Very interesting stuff, guys. Brings up a lot of buried trauma. I yearn to escape all these years, but you know, I, I, I have to do this. There's something uh, I have to find the answers to all this stuff because I really don't want another generation of people to have to deal with this nonsense. I want uh, people to live in a world where their potential isn't being quashed out of them 
as soon as they enter the public school system. I want to live in a world where potential is not used for nefarious means, where it's actually positively cultivated for the benefit for the benefit of society. Not some insane off that they pull on kids, which is just disgusting. I hope all those people who did this suffer immense justice for their actions, and they will in this world or the next. And again, um, be very aware of what's going on in these schools. Um, I've heard some people saying that not putting your school kids in schools is a cope. That is very pathetic indeed to uh, to try and just, you know, rationalize everything, every potential away and just only focus on uh, negatives. I think that's very sad. Anyway. Anyone has anything to add? Any personal experience? No. Interviews. I'm always open to do interviews on people who've uh, escaped this type of nonsense. If you're category A or if you're category B, like me, really would like to hear about it. That's going to be it for today. Thank you so much for making it this far. Please leave a like. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to subscribe. We got more content like this on the channel. And I'll see you the next time.